Hello and a very, very warm welcome back to KGC Engineering and to our mini project. And today is a big day uh, because we're taking the subframes, the front and rear subframes, off the mini, uh, ready for the body shell to go away for acid dipping. Now, if you've seen previous few videos, you'll see that we've had the engine out, we've stripped, we basically stripped the whole car down, and these two subframes now, the last two items to be removed from the shell. So, without further ado, let's get started. Well, as you can see, I'm at the back of the Mini. Um, as I thought, I take the, the rear subframe off first, uh, purely because it's generally the, the easier of the two, and I'm hoping it'll come out relatively quickly. There's um, four bolts each side, uh, plus the top mounting for the uh, telescopic damper. So there's not really a lot to undo to um, actually get the subframe off. Now, the car's still up on the ramps at the moment, uh, and that's fine for now. Um, I will be transferring it onto the stands in a little bit because we're going to have to remove the wheels to get four of the bolts out. Um, but I want to get the ones in the back in the boot area done first. Now these are located, I'll just show you with the camera, so apologies if it goes all wobbly for a minute. Um, these are located uh, here, we've got one there and one there. You've then got the top mount for the telescopic damper on that side and then it's the same again uh, this side. Now obviously we can see there's quite a bit of corrosion um, around both of the, the bolt fittings down there um, so it is possibly going to be a little bit awkward like a lot of things have been on this uh, car for the couple of things coming apart um, but we'll see so I'm just going to get in there um, with you know, the socket set uh, you can feel and actually see the nuts on the underside I'll just show you that actually uh, the nuts are located at the bottom of here, uh, hopefully be able to see that now. Um, about there, somewhere. Uh, yes, there we go. There's the nuts are located at the bottom of this pin here. Uh, you don't need to undo this one. Well, you've got one there and one the other side. It's a little bit further up. Uh, so I'm going to get a big socket on those uh, to try and stop them rotating. I'm just going to try and unscrew it from the top because it's very awkward to get the socket set in there uh, to unscrew it from there. Um, so I'll put this onto the time lapse so hopefully uh, you might be able to see it uh, come apart. Well, I'm pleased to say that it's uh, remained true to form in that uh, only one of the bolts has actually come out properly, which is this one here. Um, I've got one here which is completely rounded off underneath, so I can't actually undo the nuts. I'm going to have to cut that with the grinder. And on the other side, the other two, um, well, they snapped, uh, but been able to get the um, bits of them out so that's not going to be a problem. So I'm going to quickly jump in with a grinder and cut that one off so that we've got all of those four bolts done um, and then I'll move on to the outside ones uh, at the front of the wheels um, which will hopefully come out. Well as you can see uh, we're now at the side of the car and um, this is obviously the back wheel and um, the two bolts we need to undo are located here now they go into uh, the sill section there and should be fixed nuts in there um, so I'm hoping that they're going to undo quite well but obviously we've not really got a lot of room to get in here so I'm going to jack the car up pull the wheel off um, put stand underneath so that we can then get those out a lot easier. Um, so we don't need the wheel on for the time being, so we can take that off and so just so it gives us a good little bit more room. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs, and that's my phone going off. Um, you should know how to undo a 
you know how to take the wheel off by now if you've followed the videos it's it's simple enough just work your way around and undo I mean I've already loosened these off um, the nuts off anyway uh, because I needed to do that when it first came in so we could actually move the car um, at least it's, you know, it's simple enough to do so I'll just jack it up now and we'll see how well we get on Remember to make sure that you get a good position underneath with the jack so that it doesn't bounce off like it just did then. And that's why, also why, you never ever work under a car that's just held up with a jack. You always, always put a stand underneath. And out of the way, put the stand there, out of the way, quickly whiz this wheel off. He says quickly. <laughs> and to one side, pull the wheel off out of the way. And obviously we're then left with the hub. Now I, I just like to put the wheel nuts back on the studs. Um, more so that just keeps them out of the way. They're not going to get lost uh, or anything. So I'm just going to have to do the same the other side, just so that the car is sitting level. Very carefully lower the car down. And I can, by being right at the back, I can see where both stands are, so I can very carefully just lower it down. If I need to stop the jack, I can do. Uh, Wobble test, all seems quite happy. So that's good. So, like I say, now we've got these two bolts on there. Let's move the camera around so hopefully we'll be able to see them a bit better. Uh, just take it off the tripod. Easier. So, yeah, so we've got the, this is the main subframe here, uh, all the damping equipment and that. Um, and we've got these two bolts here, so it's this top one here and this one here. We need to undo those, uh, which will release uh, the front half of the subframe from the body. Uh, it should go relatively easy, but again, if it, the car's as rusty as this one, the chances are it's either going to snap, uh, possibly round off, or it could be, could be very awkward. But let's just see how we get on. Well, as you can see, I've now got the wheels back on. Uh, we're still on the axle stand, so the car's not going anywhere. Um, and I've managed to get one of the bolts out completely, which is this one. Um, and the other one on this side is still in there, but it's loose, it is moving, so that's okay. Uh, the other side, one of them snapped, uh, and the other one has again come loose. So we'll just catch them in for now, because we don't want the front end of the subframe to suddenly drop down, and it's not going to because that snapped one. Um, but I just didn't want to do, didn't want it to give it. I didn't want to give it the opportunity when I can get my teeth back in um, for it to drop down uh, until we've finished. Um, because now the next job is going to be to undo the uh, top securing nut for the telescopic dampers, which are in here. So by allowing the wheel uh, 
to be dropped. It also means we can get in with our hand uh, to grip it to try and stop it rotating around whilst we try and undo uh, the nuts inside, uh, which as you remember are inside the boot. So let's go there now and I'll just set the tripod up for the camera again so hopefully you'll be able to see. And obviously we've got the, the jack in the way at the moment um, and once I get some light in here be able to see that it's uh, located over here. So what we have here, if I try and zoom in as best I can for you, uh, that's, um, come on, up, 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 up. a little bit more zoom. Oop. Trying to do things one hand is quite difficult. All right, so hopefully you can see there that we've got a nut here and obviously we've got a bit of thread and then actually on the top here we've got a plain section but it's actually got two flats on each side so you can grip it with a spanner to get it to the right um, setting uh, but it also comes in useful for when we're um, undoing it uh, because it means we can hold uh, again something whilst we undo um, undo the nuts so let's just see if we can find a spanner or two that are going to fit um, bigger than that one. That size will do. And sometimes it will go quite happily. You can hear it creaking, so I'm just going to put the, the ring side on. And now the top piece isn't actually moving at the moment, so that's a good sign. Uh, it probably will do at some point, I'm sure. At least with everything out of the way in the boot here, it's created uh, a good bit of space for us uh, to be able to start, you know, to be able to do this. As I think this would be very, it'd be a much bigger job if we were replacing, you know, if we had to drop the subframe out for whatever reason with like, the fuel tank and everything else in. And it all comes out, but if you can avoid it, so much the better. Seem to be going, which is quite promising. I probably could get a socket on there, but I don't want to because I want to watch the nut as it goes up in case that um, spindle that it's on decides to start turning. Because then, if it does, uh, I, think I can get another spanner on it against those two flats. Uh, whereas, if I've got a socket on there, I won't be able to see that happen. And again, this is a point where I really ought to invest in some ratchet spanners for this kind of work, but not to worry. Yeah, there we go. You might have just seen it spin then. Yeah, the top's rotating little by little. I'm just going to see if I can just hold it with the by putting the hand around the outer casing above the wheel on the outside. So my left hand's essentially around here, just holding on to that to outer casing, just to stop anything moving around too much. Uh, so if I can do it without having you know, to put another spanner on there, that would be quite useful. Sorry, has that gone all blurry? Oh, there we go. Let it sort of come back into focus a bit.
nearly there with this one now, which is good. Um, I apologise if the footage has just gone quite a bit blurred. It's probably because the camera's trying to focus on the nut and then my hand keeps getting in the way um, of it. So it's then trying to focus in on that and it's just getting a little bit uh, confused. But uh, I, can get, I can tell you now that the nut is coming off. It's very near the end, actually. There we go. So you might have heard that went with a bit of a bang then, and that was because the, uh, the wheel dropped to the dropped to the floor, so it took the um, damper with it, which is fine because it gets it out of the way. But again, that's another reason why I put the the wheel back on the hub, uh, so that the hub didn't uh, crash down and, and land on the floor and get damaged. So I'm just going to put the nut back on the top of there um, just to hold that in place uh, and I'll now do the same with the other side and then we'll be ready to look at getting this out of here. Right well as you can see we've now got the telescopic dampers are, are clear of the mountains up there. I've just taken the, the last bolt out of the far side so I'm just going to undo the bolt this side and it's probably all going to crash down uh, in a bit of a noise, I expect, um, but that's why I'm keeping myself clear. As then, if it does decide to drop and go forward and nudge the stands, um, I'm not going to be in the way because uh, the last thing we want is the car to uh, fall on us. Now that just appears to be just be spinning, which is a bit annoying. Uh, so I might just see. Can we drop the jack down. Well, that made a bit of a noise. <coughs> you can probably hear it uh, slowly coming down then. I'm hoping that works. Yeah. And there we go. So I just got the crowbar in and just gave that uh, fixing a little wiggle uh, to hopefully clear it. So let's just drop the jack a bit more. Right, so that's the jack fully out of the way. And we can see now got the subframe um, pretty much uh, free. So I think there's only one thing that's going to be in the way and I have a feeling it's going to be those pre-fuel pipes uh, which are in the back, uh, well, which are in the boot. Um, I think I'm probably just going to need a little bit of a helping hand pushing through um, before we can fully get this out. Um, if, as I think it is just holding that far side up. So I'm going to wiggle them out and then that essentially is um, the rear subframe uh, free. Then it'll be time to start the front. Well, as we can see, the subframe is pretty much uh, out now. It's uh, rolled back a bit, um, but we've not quite got just enough clearance. So I'm just going to lift up the back end of the body, um, which will hopefully release it enough for me to be able to get behind it and obviously then pull it out. So let's just see if we can do that now. <coughs> he says. <laughs> there is definitely a fair wedge of weight in these subframes. But uh, as we can see, that is the rear one now completely free. So I can lower the back of the body shell back down onto the stands. And we can now, once we've got it down, um, we'll be able to now start having a look at the front end as well. 
sure it's as stable as it's going to get, I think. I just have to be, just have to be careful with it and make sure it's all relatively happy before we, you know, if, if we need to get any big tools in, because we don't want it to drop on the floor particularly at this point. Uh, so, yes, I'm quite pleased. Right, front end time. Well, now, obviously, we're at the front of the car, so we've now got to see how the front subframe comes apart. And again, there's not actually that many things holding it in. Uh, we have two bolts through here, uh, which occasionally you may find as towing guys. Um, so we've got those, we've got the one big bolt on each side at the top of the uh, damper towers in there. Uh, and then there's, again, four fixings for the subframe, but there's also the four for the steering rack, which has to come out with the subframe. So there's quite a few to undo inside and underneath. Um, well, I'm going to start with the ones underneath first. I'm going to work from the back and work forwards, um, purely because it's a bit of a safer way of doing it. Because um, if we say, for instance, OK, well, let's undo the two at the front here, um, and then we go to the back. If we disturb this too much whilst we're underneath, it's going to fall on us and potentially uh, we're going to have some injuries. And we don't want that. We want to try and do it as safely as possible. Uh, but the last bolts I will be taking out will be the really big uh, bolts at the top of the damper towers um, because they're just going to hold everything in place quite nicely for us. It's going to stop the main body dropping any further down um, on us. So. I'm going to head underneath and see if we can find these um, nuts that need to come off under there. All right, so we're underneath the, the front end of the Mini now, and we can see here one of the bolts coming through, and there's one the other side, so we need to get that one from the outside, um, which we should be able to do from this position with the car being up in the air, the engine's out, so we've got a little bit more space to get in to undo those. Uh, these should be fixed on a long plate um, between them on the inside of the car. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so the likelihood of them spinning is minimal, uh, but there is, of course, a possibility that if it's corroded quite badly on the inside, it's going to want to uh, spin around. So we will have to watch out for them. But you've got those on both sides. Just trying to show you the other side now. Should be able to see it's there. And again, just on the outside of that. Um, and obviously, when you're underneath the car, you've got to make sure that it's safe and stable. It's not going to go anywhere um, and that. So you know, do take your time and do take care when taking things apart. So we've got those to do as well. Well, those, those are the first ones we're going to actually undo. And then if I quickly run around to inside the cab, and the lamp with me, so we can see, the fixing plate for them is here. Uh, and you can see it's sort of underneath this rubber here, but we've got, uh, got one of the Mounts there for the so that's a bolt, and the other one's there, it's sort of hidden underneath there. But that will all peel back in time. And then, obviously, for the steering rack, we've got these four bolts here which need to be undone. Now, these are U bolts, so again, they're connected to each other, so they shouldn't spin around too much. But uh, I have a feeling that it's going to be a bit problematic to get it out, but we'll see how it goes because it, it's got to drop out with. The rest of the car uh, with, the, with the rest of the subframe sorry um, so we'll see how we get on with that so i'll crack on and get the underside done first um, and then we can see about getting the, uh, the steering rack done
Well, hopefully you will have seen in that little uh, time lapse sequence that I've managed to get the steering rack unbolted and the rear subframe mounts there all unbolted now. So that, in, in theory, ought to be free. It probably need a bit of uh, wiggling to get it off completely, um, but we, we, you know, we sort of expect that. Uh, uh, with this, so now it's time to move on to these two front uh, bolts. Um, so there's the main bolt goes through this way, and there is actually a nut on the back which you can uh, get a spanner on uh, if you need to. Uh, it is literally located. I'll just show you actually. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see. Let's put some light around. Um, it is located just here. Right, right in the corner. You might just be able to see the end of it now, just poking through. Um, yeah, it's just like lift that bolt there. So you can get a spanner on it. It is a little bit awkward to get to, um, but it is. That, that's where it is. Uh, should you need to get a spanner on it, you can do. So I'll whiz these two off, and then I think we've just got the two really big bolts on the top of the turrets to do, and it should then start to come free. Right, well, the last two bolts to be undone now are these two here. So we've got one on each side, and these are really big bolts, and the sheer size of them you know, is, is scary enough. But the socket size that fits is a 34mm uh, socket, and I had to get you're out especially to buy one of these. Um, so I'm hoping now that to get this in the right place, I can get enough pull on it for it to go. Oh, there we go. They're not usually mega tight, these, I believe, um, and they should come free relatively easily. Um, so I'll hopefully be able to do this one a little more by hand in a minute but it really it's a massive massive bolt it really is it's huge if, if you've never seen it before prepare to be shocked at how big this is it's uh, I mean, look, look at the size of that it's it's mega um you know so it does need you know a big socket on there but generally they come out uh, relatively easily like i said uh, well that's what i believe anyway uh so you got to keep those safe. You can get new ones, but uh, those will be going back in. They'll just have a clean up uh, before they go back in. So once we've got the subframe out, I can drop them back in the top uh, so they don't get lost. So I now just need to do one on the other side, and then we can look at actually getting this subframe out of here. Right, well, I believe now that I've got all the bolts out uh, and everything, so... He says, as he just looks through <laughs> through the light fitting and realizes that the top of the damper uh, bolt needs to come off. So that was actually quite fortunate, really. So I'll quickly undo those, uh, and then we can start looking at getting the subframe off this. I honestly thought I was at the stage then. Where, right, we're going to get drop this down, and lo and behold, have to just glance through there. And go, ah. That's going to be a problem. We need to get take that off as well. So I'll whiz them off and then I'll get it down. You can't write this stuff. You really can't. <laughs> right, I'll take two. Now, <laughs> now that I have got all the uh, bolts undone and I've remembered the damper ones now, I've not just gone around and gone, oh, that, it's there again. Uh, it's, just, it's done now. So anyway, not, not to worry. It's one of those things. Uh, at least I spotted it now rather than when we're trying to get it off. I think, why is this not coming off? Uh, which inevitably does happen and has happened and will happen again in the future, I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, it's now time for us to start lowering the subframe out of here. Uh, so I'm going to, first of all, jack the car up a bit more so I can get the, the ramps out. So I can put the, the stands underneath, um, which will then hopefully give enough room to start getting getting it all lowered down. So I'll pop this onto time lapse because this is probably going to take a little while um, and hopefully you'll see everything uh, that needs to be seen.
Well, hopefully, as you can see, the Mini is now just stood on the four axle stands on each corner. The two subframes are out. We've achieved what we set out to today, and it's gone incredibly well. I'm very, very pleased with how today's gone. Uh, and basically all that remains for me to do now is to lower the body shell onto the dolly, uh, take off any more parts that may have been behind the, the subframes that need taken off, so those little fuel pipes in the engine bay you may remember from uh, yesterday, the previous video. Um, you know, so there's a few bits and pieces to finish off, uh, but I'm not going to include them in the video because it's all basic things. Um, and that's that. So I'm very happy with today. It's gone well. So yes, it's now pretty much ready to go for dipping. So, well, well, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, do please hit the subscribe button. Uh, so that way you'll be able to see the very next stage of this mini project, which will be when it comes back from the acid dippers. Uh, we'll do a tour around it and see what bits we actually need to uh, repair on it uh, as we start putting our, our list of repair panels together. Um, and obviously we've got the subframes to rebuild, we've got you know, the engine needs to be sorted. There's lots and lots of things going on with this project um, which will happen over the course of however long it takes basically uh, until the job is completed. So. There we are. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, happy classic motoring.